Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing JustEatTakeaway.com stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. JustEatTakeaway.com is an online food delivery company. It is the parent of Takeaway.com, Just Eat, Skip the Dishes, Grubhub, and Menulog. It operates many food ordering and delivery platforms where customers can order food from restaurants and have it delivered directly to their home or to their work. You can order through an app on your smartphone or from a website. It began accepting Bitcoin in 2013. It has 60 million active users. The average customer places 15 orders per year. The average order size is 22 euros or $25.50 in US dollars. 588 million orders were placed in 2020. It controls nearly one quarter of the food delivery market and they have 244,000 restaurants on their different platforms. It is available in 23 countries and it is the number one food delivery service in Europe, Israel, Australia and Canada. In 2020, Takeaway.com merged with UK company Just Eat. Also in 2020, it acquired the US company Grubhub. This acquisition will help the company penetrate the large and lucrative US market. The website was created by its founder in the year 2000 because he felt it was really hard to find local restaurant menus online. The company is headquartered in Amsterdam and was founded in 2001. It started trading in 2016 and can be found on the NASDAQ, Euronext Amsterdam, Deutsche Börse, Zetra, Vienna and London Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 15 billion market cap. They're trading at 14.53 a share and they have 1 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They have negative free cash flow every year except in 2020 it was positive 157 million. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows at an unbelievable pace. 272 million way up to 3.7 billion. They're doing an amazing job growing their business mainly through acquisition. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in euros. I converted the numbers to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Here's a breakdown of their revenue in 2019 and 2020. They have the most revenue in the UK. This is from the acquisition of Just Eat. You can see they had no revenue in 2019, but when they acquired Just Eat in 2020, it gave them all that revenue. Germany is the second highest. The company started as Takeaway.com in the Netherlands, but they do more revenue in Germany than the Netherlands. And the reason they do so much revenue in Germany is because Germany shares a border with the Netherlands. And Germany is so much bigger, so there's so many more people to sell to. 83 million is the population in Germany, 17 million in the Netherlands. They did over 400 million of revenue in Canada. The UK company Just Eat acquired Skip the Dishes, which is the number one Canadian delivery food service. That acquisition was in 2016. So when they acquired Just Eat, they also acquired Skip the Dishes. So that's how they got exposure into Canada. Then the rest of the world is 514 million, which includes the US. Here's a breakdown of their revenue in a different way. This is by commission revenue, consumer delivery services, and other revenue. So commission revenue is the percent this company takes from each restaurant order. For example, if somebody placed an order for $20, the restaurant would take $19, and this company would take $1 for its fee. I'm just giving you an example. I don't know the exact breakdown. JustEatTakeaway.com generated 231 million euros from additional fees they charge to the customer. They received 157 million euros from other revenue. Examples of other revenue are the sale of merchandise or the ad revenue from promoting a particular restaurant on its app. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Then below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. 
Here's a breakdown of their 2020 expenses directly from their annual report. So you can see the operating loss of negative 107 million matches Yahoo Finance. One third of their revenue goes to the people who deliver the food from the restaurant to the customer. That expense will never go away. No matter how much they scale, they're still going to have to spend one third of their revenue to the delivery people. 193 million in order processing costs. These are the fees they pay to the credit card companies. Nearly half a billion to the payroll of the people who are not delivery people. These are the people who maintain their website, also the accounting staff, the legal team. Other expenses of 600 million and then depreciation and amortization of 172 million. So they do have negative operating income every year and it's getting worse. They're also adding a lot of debt. They only paid 200,000 euros of interest in 2018. In the trailing 12 months, it's 37 million euros. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year, and the negative is getting greater. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash, because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they did have positive operating cash flow in 2020, negative in the other years. The only reason they had positive operating cash flow in 2020 because they added 246 million on credit. When you buy something using accounts payable, it's a cash inflow. But when you actually pay for that item, it's a cash outflow. So it's like if you had $10,000 in the bank and then you went out and bought $10,000 of different items, but you used your credit card, you would be naive to think you have $10,000 of products and $10,000 of cash in the bank. So you're much better off than before when you just had $10,000 of cash in the bank. You're in the same position as before because you're going to have to pay that $10,000 on your credit card eventually. Just because they didn't pay that $246 million doesn't mean they're doing better than prior years. They do owe the 246 million euro. They will have to pay it eventually. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plant, and equipment. And that went up to 59 million in the trailing 12 months. Those are probably costs related to developing the app. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And since they don't have much cash coming in, they're running their business on equity and debt. They added 430 million of stock in 2019, 400 million in 2020. When a company adds stock, that dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. They also added a lot of debt in the trailing 12 months, over 1 billion of debt. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 13 billion of equity. They raised 13.4 billion from selling their business and they lost 870 million from running their business. Let's look at the capital structure. 15.6 billion of equity, 2.6 billion of debt. They're 86% equity, 14% debt. And their net debt is 780 million. So they could pay off a lot of the debt with the cash on their balance sheet. And their weighted average cost of capital is 8.57%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven. That's 21 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $12.8 billion. We divide that by 1 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $12. The trading at $14.53, so the trading at a 20% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The average analyst projects their revenue to grow 19.1%. So I grew their revenue 19.1% for the next seven years. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. And I think they're gonna have negative free cash flow for the next few years. So I gave them negative free cash flow until 2024. The average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. That's how I got that 2027 free cash flow number. I multiplied their revenue by 10%. For 2025 and 26, I multiplied their revenue by 5%. Because it is a low margin business. So I think it will take time for them to maximize their margins. Simply Wall Street values the company at $21. They're saying it's 31% undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading the past year and a half. So before this point, it was just Grubhub. And then Grubhub was acquired by Just Eat Takeaway. And according to Yahoo Finance, they did a one for two reverse stock split. 
So the numbers before this point are just Grubhub and the numbers after this point are of the new entity. And you could see how much trading activity occurred after Grubhub was acquired. But as you can see, the stock is down since the acquisition. And they have a really low beta, 0.26, so the stock moves one quarter of the market. It's not volatile. The stock has gone down 36% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 29%. The 52-week low was 14.48, the high was 36. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 2 to 2.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 1 billion shares outstanding, 837 million are on float, 9% are held by institutions, and under one half of 1% of the shares are shorted. Analysts are really bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 76%, their revenue to grow 19%, both much better than its industry and the market. Back in 2015, they had hardly any employees. Now they have over 10,000. That's due to all the acquisitions. The biggest shareholder is Delivery Hero. The second biggest shareholder is the founder of Takeaway.com, then Tiger Global Management, then Capital Research, then Cat Rock Management. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. They have a pretty good price to sales ratio of 4.2, so investors are paying $4.20 for $1 revenue. That's between the market median and average. Their price to book is really good at 1.0. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 15.6 billion of equity, and they have negative tangible equity since they have so much intangible assets on their balance sheet. The way you get intangible assets on your balance sheet is when you acquire another company for more than it's worth. There's nothing wrong with growing your business through acquisition, but if you organically create growth, the margins are so much higher because you don't have to pay someone else for those sales. When you acquire someone, you have to pay a lot of money and you get those sales. But organic growth is far superior than acquisition growth. If you look at Apple's balance sheet, they have no goodwill on their balance sheet because their growth is almost entirely organic. That's why they're the biggest company in the world. And when you acquire another company, sometimes it turns out really well, sometimes it doesn't. They have a good current ratio and quick ratio. They have 1.5 billion euro of cash on their balance sheet. They seem to be well capitalized even though they had negative 246 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. They have nearly 1 billion of working capital. So they have enough funding to get through the next 12 months without taking on any debt or equity. Although if they plan to acquire another company, then they probably will need some debt or equity. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry, I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Grub. And if Grub has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE. They are doing better than average in price to sales, price to book, and their current ratio is average. They're worse than average in ROE. They are low in debt. They're not a small company at 15 billion market cap but they're much lower than average because there's some really big companies in this industry like Amazon, which do something totally different than this company, but internet retail is the industry they're in. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 20% discount and they're doing a really good job growing their business. They've grown at an unbelievable rate. I think it's about 14X from 2018 to the trailing 12 month. That's their revenue growth. But I'm not the biggest fan of these types of business models. I just don't think the margins are there to make a lot of money as an investor. I like businesses that are more scalable, like software companies or manufacturing companies. So I'm definitely bearish on this company, but it's really interesting. I'm going to keep my eye on it. Maybe I'll change my mind in the near future. I rank their free cash flows 3 out of 10, their revenue 9 out of 10, and their ratios 4 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.